This is Math 99, Section 9.2, and last time we talked a lot about two variable systems, um, just systems of linear equations, and now we're going to deal with uh, three variable systems. So last time we just had x, y, so this time we're going to have x, y, and a z. So there's a system, there's a system, um, this is all going to be a system, these are just equations, and here's an equation as well, x plus y minus z equals 4. All right, so we have this, this system of equations in terms of x, y, and z, three different, um, three different variables. And we want to solve them. We want to know the x, y, z triplet that makes each of these statements true at the same time. Now, uh, before we jump into it, we're used to graphing, you know, like this is x, this is y, and we go over x, up y, and graph a point. But now what we have if, is if you let this look like more three-dimensional, we have a z-plane as well. So if we had like 2, 4, 7, that would mean we go over 2 in the x direction, we go up 4 in the y direction, but then we would come out z in the, in the 7, in the z direction. So it's hard to draw it two-dimensionally, but this is really three-dimensional space. Um, you know, another way you can think about it is x, y, and z would be coming straight out here towards you. So it'd be a space off the off the screen. So if I said two, four, seven, over two, up four, but then towards you off the screen by seven, so it'd be floating in space there. So instead of just graphing in two dimensions, right now we're graphing in in three dimensions and kind of. Tough to visualize, but the algebra isn't very different than what we've been what we've been doing so far. So before I solve that, I want to do um, throw throw another three variable system up here that's been manipulated a little bit, and think about how it could help us uh, knowing what how to solve it could help us get to a solution to there. So again, this is not the same as that. Um, this is just a different equation. So x plus y or x minus y minus z is four, and then I could have something like two uh, y plus z is ten, and I could also know that z is two. So notice this is a lot like this equation. It has x y's and z's, that system, and it has the the answers. But what I'm missing here is a little bit of structure here. I'm missing two of the x's and one of the y's. So if uh, if I could manipulate this to get rid of those x's and get rid of that y, it would look like that one. I mean, it wouldn't have the same numbers over here, but it would be the kind of the same structure. So here's what's great about this structure is uh, I, I know what z is. Z is 2. So z is 2. That's given to me. And what I can do then is I can take that value and plug it into the second equation, and I can figure out what y is because 2y, z is 2. Subtract 2, 2y is 8, divide by 2, y is 4. So now I know what z is and I know what y is. Doing this, this process is called back solving. And so I know what z is 2, I can plug it into the equation before it, but now I know what y is, I can plug it in as well. And I can use that information to solve for x. So x minus y, y is 4, minus z, z is 2, equals 4. So uh, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Add 6 to both sides. x must be 10. So there's my solution. I can write it this way, or I can write it as the ordered triplet, x, y, z. And so notice if I plug that in, it makes each of these equations true. All right, so that being said, what I want to do then, um, what I'm going to do, my, my method for solving, is trying to get my system into this form, or my two of my x's are gone, one of my y's is gone. And so I'm going to do that, do that here. And now one of the things that we were um, that we did with two by twos is we did these row operations. You know, we can multiply one of the equations by five and add it to the other equation or something like that. We do the same thing here. Um, and I noticed that I have an x here, and I'm, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this first x to eliminate those x's. And I'm going to suggest you do it in this order. Eliminate x's first, then go and eliminate one of the y's. So I'm going to use this x to eliminate those ones. 
And I'm going to call this row equation 1. I'm going to call this row equation 2. I'm going to call this row equation 3. So notice if I went uh, negative 1 times equation 2 and I added that to equation 1, that would get rid of that x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back into the equation 2 spot. So let me do that. So my, my first row is still x minus y minus 2z equals negative 1. I haven't changed equation 1 at all. But I'm going to use it to change equation 2. So I will add um, equation 2 to equation 1 after I multiply by the negative 1. So x plus negative x is 0. I wanted that to happen. Negative y minus y is negative 2y. Negative 2z minus z is negative 3z. And negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. Great. So now I'm going to do the same thinking with uh, equation 3. I want to, I'm going to try to eliminate this x. And I'm going to do it by combining with equation 1. Equation 1 is just going to be the thing I always refer back to uh, in this case. So same idea as before. If I go negative 1 times equation 3 and add it to equation 1, I'll get rid of that, that x right there. I'm going to put that back into the equation 3 spot. Multiply equation 3 by negative 1, so that makes that a negative x, negative y. That's already a negative z, so it makes it a positive z, and this makes this a negative 4. And now I'll do the addition back to equation 1. x minus x is 0. I wanted that to happen. Negative y minus y is negative 2y. Negative 2z plus z is negative z. And then negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Great. So what I've done is I've eliminated the x that's here and here. And so I have a 0 here and I have a 0 here. So the next thing I want to do now is then eliminate this, this y that's right here, right? Because I want it to be like this because then I can just back solve. And I'm through using equation 1. If I try to use equation 1 again, an x will creep back into here. So what I'm going to do now is just use equations 2 and 3 to do that. Essentially what I've done is I've, I've created a little 2 by 2 matrix that I have to solve to get y and z, and then once I know them, I can know what x is. So now it's a problem just like we had last time. And I'm going to eliminate this, this 2y right here. And the way I'm going to do it is I, these are already both negative 2y. So I'm just going to go um, negative 1 times the equation 3 plus equation 2. Put that into the equation 3 spot. So I'll multiply this by a negative 1. That would negate everything. So this negative 2x is positive. This z is positive. This 5 is positive. And then let me write what I have again. My first equation is uh, x minus y minus 2z equals negative 1. My second equation, negative 2y minus 3z equals negative 7. Those ones aren't going to change at all. But now this one will, because I'm going to add this to this. Y is a 0, which I wanted to happen. Negative 3z plus z is negative 2z. Negative 7 plus 5 is uh, C, 4, I believe. Nope, 2. How about I know how to add? Negative 2. Great. So now notice I have this 3 by 3 in this form. But it's great, now I can back solve. I'm going to start with the last equation. Negative 2z equals negative 2 divided by negative 2. Z must be 1. And if z is 1, that means I can plug it into the second equation, which is negative 2y minus 3 times z, which is 1, equals negative 7. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 2y. Minus 3 equals negative 7. Add 3 to both sides. Negative 2y equals uh, negative 4. Divide both of, both of these sides by a negative 2, and I get y equals 2. So I got two of my answers. Z is 1, y is 2. And now since I know those two, I can plug them into this equation 1 to figure out x. If x minus y, y is 2, minus 2 times z, z is 1, equals negative 1. So this would be x minus 2 minus 2 equals negative 1. x minus 4 is negative 1. Add 4 to both sides. 
x is 3. So I can write my solution that way. I can list it as x equals 3, y equals 2, z equals 1. Or I can write it as the ordered triplet, 3, 2, 1. And if I really want to check it, plug 3 in for x, plug 2 in for y, plug 1 in for z on all of each of these, and they'll equal negative 1, this one will equal 6, this one will equal 4. So again, my strategy is to eliminate those x's, then eliminate one of the y's. And I noticed that like this 4x right here is going to kind of be troublesome to work with. You know, I usually use that first x for the other two x's. So one thing that I can that I can do without changing the system at all is I can just swap a couple of equations. So if this is equation one and equation two, I can just change where they are in the order. Just just rewrite the whole system so that equation two is on top, equation one's on the bottom. It doesn't doesn't change anything. So let me let me do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the x term in equation one to get rid of the x term in equation two and the x term in equation three. So looking at um, this one, this 4x, you know, if this was a negative 4x, I could add these together and that would go. So I'm going to multiply equation one by negative two and add it to equation two. I'm going to put the, the answer into the equation two spot. So uh, let me do that. And I think I'll do this in red. So if I multiply this by negative 2, instead of a 2x, this is a, a negative 4x, which I wanted to happen. This is a negative 6y. No, it's a positive 6y because it's already negative. This is a negative 6z. And I remember I got to multiply this one by negative 2 as well. Um, this is a negative 18. Great, so that's negative two times equation one. I'm gonna add it to equation two. So I'm, I'm gonna keep my original equation one. And let's see, negative two times it plus that, x is, those are zeros, I wanted that to happen. Six uh, y plus y is seven y. Negative six z minus two z is negative eight z. And negative 18, oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then negative 18 plus zero, is negative 18. Good. All right, so that was taking care of this x term. Now I'm going to take care of this x term. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to use this 2x to get rid of that negative 6x. And the way that I'm going to do that is uh, this is a negative 6x. If this was a positive 6x, when I added them together, it would go away. So if I multiply this one by three, so three times equation one, and add that to equation three, put it in the equation three spot, that should take care of that negative six x. So multiply equation one by three, six x minus nine y plus nine y equals 27. I'm gonna add that to equation three, put it in the equation three spot. Six x minus six x is zero, I wanted that to happen. Negative 9y minus 2y is negative 11y. 9y plus z is 10z. 27 plus 0 is 27. So now from here, um, I've got it, so my x's are taken care of. I've eliminated those two x's. So now I'm going to eliminate one of these y's. And this one, look, I have a 7y and a negative 11y. It's kind of a bear, but it's not too bad. Um, how about I make them both 77s? So in other words, what I could do is I could go um, 11 times equation 2, and I could add that to 7 times equation 3, and put that in the equation 3 spot. So if I think about that, 11 times equation 2 is, uh, I'm just going to scratch it out right here. 11 times equation 2 would be 77y minus 88z equals whatever 18 times 11 is, negative 198. And 7 times equation 3 would be negative 77y, which is great, I want that to happen, plus 70z equals, and then 27 times 7 is some, 189. So let me get a little bit of movement. 
I still have my first equation, 2x minus 3y. And now if I add these together, that's a 0. Negative 88 plus 70 is negative 18. And then negative uh, 198 my, uh, plus 189 is negative 9. So then now, look, I have it in my form. No x's, one of my y's missing. So now I can back solve. So I'll start with uh, this first equation. Divide by negative 18. So z is 1 half. So if z is 1 half, I can plug it into this equation right here. So that gives me 7... I was supposed to be a 7. 7y seven minus 8 times a half equals negative 18. So 7y minus 4 is negative 18. Add 4 to both sides. And 7y is negative 14 divided by 7. So it looks like y must be negative 2. So if y then is negative 2 and z is 1 half, I can plug them both into the top equation. y is negative 2, z is 1 half, so let me plug those in. 2x minus 3y, 3 times negative 2, plus 3 times a half equals 9. So this would be 2x plus 6 plus 1.5 equals 9. 2x, uh, 6 plus 1.5 is 7.5. Subtract 7.5 from both sides. You get 1.5. So 2x equals 1.5. Divide that by 2. And you get uh, 3 fourths, or 0.75. So there's my answers. x is 3 fourths y is negative 2, z is 1 half. I could write it that way, or I could write it as the ordered triplet, 3 fourths, negative 2, 1 half, x, y, z. Do a couple more examples. So here's my next example. And notice that in this one, it's still a three variable systems. I have x, y's, and z's, three equations, but it's kind of a mess. Like, it's not very well organized. So first thing that I'm going to do with this is, is rewrite it so it's organized. So I know, notice I have 2x plus y. I don't have any z's, so I'm going to leave us a, a placeholder, like a 0 there for the z's. And in this next one, I don't have any x's. So I'll leave a 0 here. I'll line the y up under the y. I'll put this in the z column. And then I'll do the same thing with this last one. I have an x. I have a no y's. I have minus a z equals 4. And so if I if I write it this way with these with these placeholders, it's actually going to be a little easier to uh, to manage. So now I can dig into my strategy. Remember, my strategy is to get rid of these x's and then get rid of that y. So at least one of the x's is taken care of for me. It's gone in, in equation two. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this x. Now that's a two x. If this was a negative two x, it'd be great. So why don't I make it 1? I'll go equation 1 plus uh, negative 2 times equation 3 gets put into equation 3. And so uh, negative 2 times equation 3, that would make this a negative 2x. This would still be a 0. Negative 2 times negative z, that makes this a, uh, a positive 2z. And negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So the first equation stays as it is. Second equation is not modified either. But now, uh, 2x times negative 2x is 0. That goes. y plus 0 is y. That y fills in that spot. 0 plus 2z is 2z. And then negative 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Great. So then now... We have it in the shape where these x's are x's are gone. So we want to get rid of that y. And that should be pretty straightforward. Um, if these were just opposites, they would cancel out. So I'm going to say equation 2 plus uh, negative 1 times equation 3. That'll make that a negative y. 
it's going to go into the equation 3 spot. So my first equation is not modified at all. Second equation, same. And that third equation, it got negated, so everything got turned negative. Use that just because it was a negative zero, whatever. And then it gets added to equation two. So y minus y is zero. Negative 2z minus 2z, that is negative 4z. And then, um, for some reason, I enjoy saying 4z. And then 4 minus 0 is 4. So then now from here, we can back solve. So if negative 4z equals 4, z equals negative 1. That means if I know that value, I can plug it into here and figure out what y is. y minus 2 times negative 1 equals 4. So y plus 2 is 4. So y must be 2. So now that I know what y is, I can plug it into here. And if there was a z, I would plug it in as well, but there's not. Um, 2x plus y, y is 2, equals 8. So subtract 2 from both sides. 2y equals 6, so y must equal 3. And there's my solution. Oh, not y, sorry. Those are x's. Those are x's. So x is 3, y is 2, z is negative 1. I can write it that way. Or I can write it as the order triplet, 3, 2, negative 1. If you check them, plug them back in, each of those statements will be true once you plug in those x, y, and z values. So here's the next example I'll give a try to. And... Um, and 4x, I think, is going to be a little bit difficult to work with to cancel the other x's. So I'm just going to switch equation 3 and equation 1. What I want to do is get rid of these x's first. So I'm thinking uh, this is a negative 6x. If this was a positive 6x, they would cancel right out. So if I were to go 6 times equation 1, <clears throat> add that to equation 2 and put it in equation 2, it should give me some answers. Uh, at least give me something that'll that'll work uh, to get rid of that x. So 6 times equation 1, that would make this a 6x, a negative 12y, a negative 12z, a positive 18. So I'm just going to add uh, 6 times equation 1 times equation 2. Equation 1 doesn't change. X's go. I wanted that to happen. Negative 12y minus 9y is uh, negative 21y, negative 12z plus 12z is 0, okay, and then 18 plus 3 is 21. Great, so that's gotten rid of that one. So let's get rid of this one. This is a 4x. If that was a negative 4x, it would be gone. So after I add them together, so I'm going to go uh, negative 4 times equation 1 plus equation 3 put that into equation three. So negative four times equation one, negative four x plus eight x uh, plus eight z equals negative 12. And let me add them together now. So four x minus four x, that goes, x is gone. Eight, uh, that should be a y, I wrote, I wrote x, that should be a y. Eight y plus six y is 13 y. Uh, 8z minus 8z is 0, and negative 12 plus 11 is, is negative, um, plus 1 is negative 11. So now I'm here. So now what I'd like to do is eliminate this y. Whew, that's a little bit of a bear, but I think I can do it. That's a 13, that's a 21. So if I go 13 times equation 2 plus 21 times equation 3, put that into equation three these will cancel so uh, let's see 21 times 13 that means this is 273 y 21 times 13 oh 273 uh, 21 times 13 that, that should be negative 273 y 
And then 11 times 21 is negative 231. So my first equation doesn't change. My second modified equation doesn't change. And then my third equation, let's see, this is a zero. So this side's just zero. And that equals 273 minus 231, 42. Oh, look what I end up with. Zero equals 42. So remember before when that happened, that means no solution. We could write it this way or we could write it that way. Now, these three variables and three equations, um, before we were dealing with lines, but now we're dealing in three-dimensional space. These are actually planes. So if you look at this picture, you can see like three planes are intercepting here at a point. So like on this on this part right here, let me get this one where I can write on it. The the solution is like where the three planes cross at a point. What we just did was something where the planes don't cross at the same place. So it could be something like this: all three planes never touch each other, or something like this. So both of these are no solutions, and those are going to come from these uh, situations where we have um, zero equals one. So we, got all, we did all that work. We ended up with all the variables crossing out equal to some whole number. No solution on that. All right, let's do this example. Um, just like before, I'm going to switch those equations, get that X up top so it's a little more useful to me. Uh, I noticed that that's a 6X. So if this was a negative 6x, I'd be able to cancel that pretty well. So I'm going to go negative 6 times equation 1 plus equation 2 is going to go into equation 2. So negative 6 times equation 1, that would make this a negative 6x, a negative 6y, a negative 6z, and a negative 30. So my first equation is not going to be modified. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Negative 6y plus 8y is 2y. Negative 6z plus uh, 2z is negative 4z. And then negative 30 plus 18, negative 12. Great. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of this uh, 3x. If this was a negative 3x, I'd be able to get rid of that. So I'll go negative 3 times equation 1 plus equation 3, going into the equation 3 spot. Negative 3x, negative 3y, negative 3z, negative 15. Zero for the x's. Uh, negative 3y plus 4y is y. Negative 3z plus z is negative 2z. Negative 15 plus 9 is uh, negative 6. Great. So now I'm going to, I got rid of my x's here, so I'm going to try and get rid of this y. So if I went something like equation 2 plus negative 2 times equation 3, I'd make that a negative 2y. Put that into the equation 3 spot, it should work. So negative 2 times this would be negative 2y plus 4z plus 12. So my first equation stays as it is, it's not modified, x plus y plus z equals 5. My next equation. 2y minus 4z equals negative 12. And then my last equation is negative 2y plus 4z equals 12. Oh, wait, I was going to add that to this. So when I add these two together, y's go, z's go, uh oh, this side's 0, negative 12 plus 0. I end up with a statement that's always true. So this actually has infinite solutions. Now, we're not going to get deep into like what the case is. It could be that they're all the same plane. They're all stacked on to each other. Or, or two of the planes are the same. But another thing that could happen is they could intersect at a straight line like this, which would mean that um, there's an infinite number of solutions. They're just of a certain type. We're not going to worry about finding, finding the type of solution on these. We're just going to, uh, we'll just say infinite solutions. And that should work 
should work just fine. All right, give these a try. Let me know what questions you have. I know they're a lot of work, but uh, they, you know, if you if you let yourself think that they're fun, they are. <laughs> I, I enjoy doing them. I hope you do too. Again, send me any questions that you have.